John Don once said, no man is an island. Which is why, if we're going to make a top-down RPG like Zelda, we're going to need some characters for Tom to interact with. In Zelda, Link had NPCs that he could interact with. Some of these NPCs gave quests, others just kept him updated on current events, others ran shops, maybe had puzzles for him to solve, some of them walked around, some of them didn't. Making Zelda took a huge team of people, but because of the advancements of technology in the last 20 years, making NPCs is now a one-person job. So for my game, I had originally planned on using these NPCs, which of course requires character concepts and animations. This one is based off one of the characters from my favorite YouTube channel, Viva La Dirt League. Warning! Nice day for fishing, ain't it? <laughs> so have I told you about my Patreon page yet? Well, if not, then just let me say I'd really appreciate your support. According to your level of support, you could gain early access to my YouTube content. You could gain access to my private Discord channel where you can ask me any question that you like regarding any of my builds. You can take part in online polls, maybe give a shout out in one of my videos, or even download the project files for my complete 2D player controller and complete inventory system. Well, on the Patreon note, I just wanted to bring some attention to the champions that have supported me thus far. So, I scrapped all my old NPCs and made some characters in their honor. So I just want to say thank you to Mr. Vastian, Crispy Chicken, JSM, Ice Arena, Zeblog Spinach, Zai Niara, and of course, Yoon Sungi. 20 points if you know why he's holding the surfboard. But there's one more person I owe a thank you to. If you remember from my last video, I had a little problem with my sprites tearing and leaving little green lines in my tile map. Remember how I said if you could fix my issue, I would find a way to kiss your face? Well, Toge Kurtulis actually made the suggestion that forever fix my problem. You see, the issue isn't with the sprites or the materials that are placed on them. In other words, you don't fix this problem by increasing the size of your sprites or reducing the gaps in the tile palette or by applying different materials to each sprite. The issue is with the rendering and processing it has to do at runtime to keep up with where each of these sprites are supposed to be and when. So to fix this, all you have to do is put the sprites that you're using in a sprite atlas. This, in a way, creates like a Unity Walmart, where Unity knows where to get all of the sprites that it needs from one place. So, to make good on my promise, I made an NPC for him too. Ha! Gay! In order to add NPCs to my game, I knew I was going to need to work out several issues. For example, not only do I need NPC sprites with animations for a walk, talk, and idle phase, I need a place for them to live, with exteriors and interiors to the building. I needed to make objects to populate the inside of the building, and I needed to make it to where they could walk around these things but not through them. To accomplish this, I simply added a 2D nav mesh to the ground layer. And if you're not sure how to do this, there is a great video that I will put in the description that will show you exactly how to do it. The ground layer is defined as walkable, and the walls and objects are defined as non-walkable. And to implement some of the basic NPC behavior, I gave each of the NPCs a nav mesh agent component, and I set the speed and radius on that object. I then put some walk points around the areas that they should patrol, and I set them up to randomly decide which location to walk to between a random time of 10 and 15 seconds. They could decide to stay in the same location that they're currently in, or they could move. It's totally up to the brain of the NPC controller. I also made little changes going inside and outside of buildings. Before I used a dither effect, and well, it just wasn't working for me, so I changed the transition to a circle in and out effect that made it to where I could easily change this effect in the future if I chose to. So I've watched a lot of devlogs that make the entire game making process sound quick and easy, but nothing could be further from the truth. While I certainly enjoy this process, that doesn't mean that it's not a lot of work. So far I've probably put like 100 hours in this project, if not more. I probably spent 80% of that time making art and man was that tedious, and about 20% of the time implementing code and setting up Unity to work correctly. If I'm making this look easy, you should know it's not. Which brings me back to John Don's comment about how no man is an island. For me to be able to make it this far, I could never have done it without my patrons to give suggestions and even help solve some of my problems. And so if you're going to make games, you should be part of a Discord community too. And while it doesn't have to be my community, I want you to know that the people in my community are all avid video game designers and most of them have not only made several projects of their own, they know what they're talking about. And they also recognize talent when they see it. It has been my absolute pleasure to make some NPCs in their honor. They showed me love and I want to return some of that love back to them. Ha! Gay! If you'd like to help support me on Patreon and be part of this awesome community, 
you can find the link in the description below. This time, I made some NPCs. Next time, it'll probably be something else. I'm certainly going to need suggestions on enemies, NPC dialogue, and game mechanics. And while this project will likely never be a marketable game, I do plan on publishing the tutorials to Udemy so that anyone can see the start to finish process on how to make a game like Zelda. And if you're interested in how I did this, the sooner I get done with this project, the sooner I can make the course. Oh, and when I get it done, I'm going to make the tutorials either heavily discounted or free to those who supported me along the way. Yeah! So John Don is right. No man's an island. So to all my patrons, thank you for being my village. As always, thanks for joining me. My name is Megahertz, and I'm out. <laughs>